Hello and welcome to the... Right? Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a very messy beginning of... Oh, for f crying out loud. This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Gran Turismo 7's 1.35 update for June 2023, barely June at this rate. Uh, of course, the main headline is three new cars. That's really all that's in this update, if I'm honest. That being the Aston Martin Valkyrie 2021, the Mitsubishi Evo, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 3, GSR 1995 and then the Supro Impreza sedan WRX STI specifically the 2004 model year <sighs> Aston Martin Valkyrie is an eye-watering 4 million credits that was quite the heart attack waking up this morning to find that out I was guessing to myself is it going to be 2.3 or is it going to be 3 mil well it was 4 so got back on Sardegna with my 787B and grinded those four mil out and I hate that track and hate that car with a burning passion now. Of course, both the Lancer Evo and the Mitsubishi in... Wow. Both the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 3 and the Subaru Impreza are both available in the used car dealership, which is actually pretty neat. The uh, Mitsubishi Evo is a hundred grand flat in the used car dealership, and the this is the interesting one. You can buy both the Subaru in the used car dealership for forty-two grand, or brand new for fifty. So instead of being logical in buying a used car with some miles on it for eight grand less. I decided to buy the brand new car with zero miles for eight grand more, even though I will assure you I will never be playing the car. Reasons? I don't even know. I... The reason... I have no reasons left, as I've played this game daily for the past eight months, grinding credits, garnering more than 600 hours, so there, there's no logic or reasoning left in me here. So the other news of the update is we've got new music rallies, which I'm not going to touch on because I haven't even beaten the first ones yet because they're a waste of time. Now going into this recording session, I was trying to figure out what my thoughts were of this update. And I'm still, to be honest, like trying to figure that out too. Obviously, it's underwhelming. That's There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But you can't have like a 1.34 or a 1.32 update every time you update the game. You're going to have, as a developer, you're going to have some ebb and flow. Like, we're still waiting for the 24-hour race update, which that's going to be an absolutely massive one. But until then, they've got a lot of work, probably testing the PlayStation 5 to figure out if it can even run for 24 hours in a race. And I'm getting the feeling that why we haven't seen it yet is the thing is burning after probably hour eight. <laughs> With every game studio, you got to give them a little bit of leeway and say like, you know, this is well past a year. We're probably looking at month 15 of Polyphony Digital supporting this game. And I'm going to be honest because I've been in an abusive relationship known as a Need for Speed fan. The fact that we've gotten 15 or more updates since launch, I am just kind of like really, I don't know. I'm just still really excited that the game is still being updated, which when you look at the competition and you see Forza Horizon 5 is being updated monthly since launch, like that's kind of the standard. So the fact that Need for Speed doesn't do that is the anomaly. So again, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of this, but the additional things are additional extra menus, additional characters in the cafe, I guess. 
Uh, Fanatic, Fanatec is added to the Brand Central. GT Auto's got some extra stuff, I guess. Sport Mode has got some extra stuff. I mean, like I said, this is mainly just like an, an, a patch that is or an update that is mainly for fixing bugs and whatnot so yeah like i said I'll, I'll continue to say this it's still underwhelming one of the other new updated courses is of course the world touring car championship 800 for topless so bear with me on this one um I tried to do an online race and I qualified and everything and I was waiting for it to start and then it just booted me. So that's why I'm playing with AI. So sorry for all of you who are out there that are very um, upset with me not doing against other people. I don't even know anymore. And ironically, I think that's going to be the discussion topic for the rest of this video here. Uh, I wish I had more to discuss about the update itself. Uh, but there, like, wasn't really much in it, I suppose. But the thing that I've been interested in is just, like, reading the comments in, like, Reddit and on my channel and whatnot. And everybody having these absolutely outlandish kind of requests of, like, you know, Bluffany, I wish you did this. I wish you did that. I wish you did this. Well, you got to stop adding cars. I wish you were start adding, like, more features, things that people would do or, like, actually play with versus, like, you know, more, more and more and more cars that nobody's ever actually going to play as. And it's like, I, I'm getting really bogged down with all this negativity all in all, because there were a lot of fabulous YouTubers out there that I've been watching semi recently doing a lot of great video essays on the racing game genre as a whole. And one of them just blatantly quit and just decided to rebrand their channel and do like two-hour video essays on like Final Fantasy or whatever and it's just like <sighs> I'm struggling here guys I really am because even as like a content creator I was trying to draw a line in the sand about saying hey like last week I discussed Circuit Superstars and how you know we waited three or four years basically for you know original fire games to finally get around to the switch version and apparently like all the delays were not their fault and whatnot but like they didn't communicate that at least they didn't communicate that effectively so in the video all i was stating was i was disappointed so yeah i've had a number of people comment under my videos like on tiktok and all the rest of that saying like you know your opinion is wrong and this that the other thing i'm like okay my opinion is I'm disappointed that it took three years for the Switch version to come out. You know, I'm not arguing that they're a bad game or a bad developer or anything like that. I'm just stating I'm disappointed. I'm sorry. You know, that's it. So I honestly can't imagine what it's like being a developer nowadays like Polyphony or like EA where no matter what you do, everybody's going to be pissed off in some way, shape, or form. And it's like, why? That's not healthy for anybody. You know, I joined multiple racing game subreddits because I enjoy and love the game. So when people are just talking about how much they hate the game, it's like, no, I didn't join uh, I Hate Gran Turismo subreddit because if you put the two of them together, the Gran Turismo subreddit and the I Hate Gran Turismo subreddit, They'll look identical, you know? So it's... I think the real saving grace right now is the modding community, I, I honestly feel like. Because with the amount of praise that the handful of guys who are making the Gran Turismo 4 Spec 2 mod, the praise that they're getting is like, that's... That's the positivity that I'm looking for nowadays. So we've got enough garbage going on in the world right now that I don't need to like hear about how grinding in Gran Turismo 7 is bad because it is bad. But like bringing it up every single solitary day is not going to fix the problem. It's either you'd shut up and deal with it or you move on. So to kind of get back on topic at hand, I know by this point in this video that most of everybody's already clicked off. So for those of you who are still watching at this point, hi, thank you for stay, sticking around for this time. 
you know, going back to this update, like I said before, it's this is a very underwhelming update. I was yes, we all wish that there was more. But to try to increase positivity, you know, I want to look at the fact that the game is still being updated. Game is not a horrifyingly disgusting buggy mess. And when you get outside of the grinding, when you get outside the, you know, uh, car collecting, and if you have some good races on online mode and not races A or B, it's probably in race C is when the more competitive stuff is, you know, there are some really good moments there. So I almost, I think for my next video, actually, I want to start a new series where it's five things I love about Gran Turismo 7. You know, I'm tired of hearing all sorts of things that are negative about, you know, racing games and how, like, the communities are just like, oh, well, why don't you just, you know, remake Gran Turismo 4? Why don't you remake Need for Speed Most Wanted? It's like, you guys can. It's called you open an emulator and you load up the game and you play it. And I think the pe thing that people forget is that, you know, that emulators exist and, you know, companies are out there making money. Yes, they can remaster the game. But, like, then they're not being innovative. They're not being unique. They're just rehashing the same product that they already released. And, yeah, it'll make some money, but I think they'll have more backlash from people saying that you're just rehashing it versus, like, doing new things with it. So, again, like I said, I'm tired of the negativity. So, instead of complaining about the negativity and just adding to the cesspool of disgustingness... Hashtag things I love about GT7. You know, let's get that going. And next week's video is going to be just that. Unless if another game comes out unexpectedly that I wasn't expecting. Uh, but yeah, it's just... Let's... <laughs> let's turn all this disgustingness into, like, actually good for once, dare I say it. Because I'm... I'm still staggered at the level of quality that we've gotten out of this game. The hundreds of hours they've gotten out of this game isn't for nothing, or at least I'm trying to tell myself that it's not all for nothing. Uh, you know, I've played this over PlayStation Remote Play with, you know, Rewast for 100 hours, and I've played it on Steam Deck with Chiaki for probably easily over 300 hours at this point. It's it's just absolutely crazy you know, how much time I've put into this game. And if it wasn't interesting or enjoyable in some weird, demented way doing all those hours of grinding, then, you know, I don't know. But, I mean, it works seamlessly with the wheel. I mean, it's literally plug and play with it. It connects up with the Fanatic or Fanatec's entire ecosystem of, like, hundreds... Well, not hundreds, but you know what I mean. A ton of pet, a ton of wheels, and with the Podium series and whatnot, you can literally just swap out any wheel rim that you've got on your actual car for throwing it into Gran Turismo. I mean, Gran Turismo's got great, great insanely detailed cars and don't even get me started on playstation vr 2 i haven't tried it yet but man do i want to it looks like it's an absolute blast can't justify the price right now but it looks like it's fun <laughs> so polyphony thank you thank you for creating a great game thank you for continuing to update this game I mean, yeah, we've all got our criticisms about it, but at the end of the day, this is, like, one of the best, like, selling games on the PlayStation 5 for a reason, you know? So I'm... I'm ecstatic. I'm actually going to see if I can focus now and see if I can actually catch up the first place on a dead rear left tire that wants to kill me at every single moment. So for those still watching, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell for new content when I post at 10 o'clock central time on Fridays. And I will see you all next week with five things I love about Gran Turismo 7. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.